Okay, good morning everybody. We're live on air now. Uh, my name is Fraser May. I'm from Civil Contractors New Zealand. I'm the Communications Advisor. Uh, thanks to everyone who's joined us today for a webinar on reviewing the Code of Practice for Temporary Traffic Management. Uh, we're just waiting for people to arrive in the room now. Um, and uh, while we do that, I'm just going to explain uh, how our webinar platform works. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see a chat function. So do feel free to ask us any questions uh, throughout the webinar using that chat function. Uh, we've sent you a review link to the documents that uh, Waka Kotahi has issued around uh, reviewing the Code of Practice for Temporary Traffic Management. Um, and uh, so hopefully you've had a chance to have a look at that. Uh, any questions, we will uh, fire through to the Waka Kotahi team. And uh, just, I think we'll get going in around about 30 seconds. So thanks everyone for joining us once again uh, as people arrive. Uh, I have with me here this morning, uh, Stacey Goldsworthy. So he's the CCNZ Technical Manager. Uh, we've got Suzanne Watt from WorkSafe New Zealand. Uh, we've got James Hughes, who's having some microphone issues this morning and he is uh, the, um, he's from Wakakotahi. He's the New Zealand uh, Safety Lead for Roads and Roadsides. We have Neil Greaves, who's the Principal Coptum Advisor. Many of you may know Neil. Uh, and we have Michael Rensen, who is the Team Lead for Construction and Safety. That's great. So um, welcome once again, everyone. Um, I'm going to hand over to Neil now. Uh, James is going to take this section, but I'm sure he'll, um, <laughs> he's along for the ride anyway. Neil, um, please take it away and let us know uh, a little bit more about uh, the Co Coptum and why we're reviewing it. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, so the code of practice, the code of practice has been um, has been in place now since the uh, mid to late nineties, uh, and the, the, the function, I suppose, of the document is to give to support give support to uh, to all who uh, are um, um, managing um, uh, roadwork sites and the risks associated with their task. Um, so the, 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 the code of practice is in place to assist the workforce um, in relation to the context of those, those activities and also uh, um, and predominantly traffic flow, keeping people moving, keeping the traffic um, getting from A to B and also with assisting them with, a, with a, um, that no surprises approach, which is uh, we don't want to come up against anything which is going to to cause them um, uh, undue um, uh, panic or uh, or potential delays, um, the um, the risk approach, is, uh, risk based approach, has been talked about more recently. That risk approach, risk based approach, has always been a part of the code of practice uh, in relation to identifying that those site risks, part of our planning process, um, and the. Um, the layout diagrams which we we see in the in the back of the code are there to help to give guidance um, on how to um, mitigate particular risks for those particular situations okay, Neil, would you be able to tell us a little bit about uh, why we're reviewing Coptum at this stage there's, I'm going to talk a little bit further about uh, about the, the the review and um, what that's probably going to look look like and the purpose. Um, so really, here is just it's just I suppose setting up um, the, the expectation of that that present presentation a bit later. Um, yes. So we, the 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 code of practice needs to be able to. Um, so be, be agile, be dynamic, be able to change to um, to to the conditions that are changing within industry needs, um, and and I, and I think uh, a lot of the people who are attending this uh, webinar today are, are fully aware of the the changes that are coming in the training and competency area, um, which is important for us to uh, to make sure again that that, that these um, that the training meets the need. Uh, also, changes in legislative requirements uh, and, and understanding um, further how that uh, how those legislative requirements will affect 
how we operate on a daily basis, uh, which I'm, uh, which I know that um, Suzanne, will, who's coming up, will will help with that uh, a bit of that understanding. And the Austro's review, you you may also be aware that um, the, the uh, Austro's um, guide to temporary traffic management was uh, published in December of last year. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, uh, and how we will um, do an analysis of that document as part of this review. Okay, thanks very much, Neil. That's a good introduction. Um, so I think we're ha hanging over, handing over to Suzanne now, is it correct? Yes. Uh, would you be able to take us on uh, a little bit of a, a run through the, the relationship between Coptum and what WorkSafe does? You might need to unmute your mic, though. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're having a bit of a technical issue there with Suzanne, who is just plugging back in. Sorry about that, team. Okay, Stacey, would you mind uh, covering off a little bit of Suzanne's? Um... Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Rose, I can. If uh, Suzanne gets that going, um, then she can just jump in. Um, so I suppose, uh, I suppose, speaking from CCNZ's point of view, um, we approached uh, WorkSafe and NZTA about uh, issuing some guidance. Um, there uh, was a bit of work that was done around the legislations that that affect um, temporary traffic management, and I think we added a few more uh, into well, than what are currently uh, recorded and um, and copped them. So it's um, it's quite a dynamic uh, space. The, the, the legislation that's um, that's available. So with WorkSafe, um, the uh, HASWA, the Health and Safety Work Act, um, they, uh, we wanted to discuss how um, that could be applied. I think if you look at uh, COPTAM, it sits under the um, Traffic Devices Control Traffic Control Devices Manual, and it kind of enacts the, uh, the land transport rules. So that discussion in uh, WorkSafe uh, led to them um, mm. looking to develop the uh, guidance. Okay, thanks. So, uh, Can you guys hear today, me? Yep, so Suzanne's rejoined oh, us. Stacey's just given you a little bit of a lead in there. Sorry about the technical issues, everyone that's attending. And uh, Suzanne's gonna gonna take it from here. Okay, thank you. you. Sorry, people. Um, so industry approach works safe um, last year regarding um, developing some industry guidance for how to keep road and roadside workers safe. Um, so we've been working on doing that and we are drafting a document at the moment. So the document itself is very holistic. It is completely different from Coptum. Um, so it will not be incorporated incorporated in with Coptum at all. They will be standalone documents, but they will be quite complementary. So the kind of things that we're going to cover, and these are just a few, there are a huge range of topics. So. We will cover quite extensively roles and responsibilities. And this is between organisations, it is between workers that are on site. So for example, site foremen, as well as general workers, um, it will cover the roles and responsibilities of say, traffic management staff and workers that are on site, um, undertaking the work themselves, and just give a bit more clarity around um, what kind of things and what good would look like. Um, we're also going to touch on facilities that should be provided for workers on various sites. Um, fatigue, stress, mental health, we will refer to other guidance documents that we have, for example, things on extreme temperatures. Um, we will touch on procurement. We will also touch on aggressive behaviours, particularly from public. So that's particularly looking at aggressive behaviours towards stock goies. Um, we're also going to look at the project planning and management side of things because that's where we can find a lot of changes can be made that actually make the work safer for road and roadside workers. So the reason I'm saying road and roadside workers is that it is not exclusive for just people who build and maintain roads. It also encompasses people who work on utilities, for example, and anyone that can be working within that road and roadside. Um, we have started drafting the document and we had a workshop in, gosh, 
February, <laughs> it feels like ages ago now, um, with a group of representatives from um, contractors as well as NZTA, local council and utility groups. And we've done a fair bit of work with them around what kinds of things that they are having issues with and, and seeing as challenges that they would like us to focus on. So a lot of the work that we're doing at the moment has been informed by that workshop. Once we have a document drafted, we will be going back to that group and testing some things and getting good case studies around what good looks like with the examples that we're wanting to show so that they are actually real and that they actually mean something to those of you who will pick up this document and read it. Um, we are at the moment looking at what kind of wider consultation process we will go through, but we don't want to touch too much on that until we actually know what this document's going to look like and how broad it is as well. There is a possibility we will separate it into two different documents, one that will focus on workers themselves and one that will focus on all the planning, management and procurement that goes into looking after and supporting workers. So that's kind of the document. Um, we are looking to release it early next year, so that kind of gives you a guide on timeframes. I'm not yet sure what impact um, COVID has had on that. At this stage, our staff that are working on it are still busy working on it. Um, the challenge for us will be when we're ready to get everybody back together, how easy it is to do that um, in person rather than doing things always remotely and online. But if there are any questions, I'm happy to take some questions on it. Um, yeah. yeah. No, th thanks, for that, Suzanne. That's really good. I think um, just a quick recap. So the the um, document that you're working on is separate to comp Compton, but it couple complements it. And yeah. um, the WorkSafe guidance will, will focus on uh, what you can need to consider and why you need to consider it. Uh, whereas yeah. whereas Compton is a lot more focused on the how how you do it. Is that correct? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So um, I think we did have a question around um, who was uh, publishing guidance but I think um you know WorkSafe obviously is the, is the regulator so so it's, it's yes. um that's separate from Copton but uh they, they will have regard to each other so that's why we have mentioned it in this webinar okay thanks for that Suzanne I think uh, we're ready to move on to uh are we ready to move on to Michael's section now I'm ready thank you great okay take it away Michael Thank you, Fraser. Look, um, look. good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for joining. Um, as Fraser said at the outset, I'm, um, I'm, I'm part of the critical risks teams within the transport agency. I've just got a, a couple of slides just, again, to provide a little bit of context as to um, the, the review of Coptum. Um, one of the things I do is I... I look after the Road Worksite Health and Safety Improvement Program. program. Um, it's an umbrella type program that is focused on improving the way workers, the public and customers are protected on and around road work sites. It's been jointly run by the Transport Agency and Civil Contractors. Thank you, Fraser. Um, it's been organised at this point in time into, um, into four principal work streams, raising public awareness, road user compliance, changing improving industry practice and reviewing TTM procurement and related processes. Uh, the review of Copton, which this webinar is about, is um, part of the changing and improving industry practice work stream. That's my little um, intro and my little bit of context. Thank you again. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Michael, and we might we might come back to a little bit more on that with um, Stacey later. Thanks. Okay, so now we're on to the review of Coptum itself, I believe. Uh, so Neil was going to take us through that in a bit more depth and explain. Uh, please go ahead, Neil. Neil, uh, you ready to go? Sorry, can you hear me? Oh, sorry, just um, thank you. Thank yes. My microphone was turned on there for you. Yeah, yep, yep, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, so, so, hi again, everybody. Um, so, this particular part, I'd like to start um, uh, by recognising the um, contributors to the work that has already been carried out, uh, and that's been over the past twenty years uh, in the in the development of the Coptum as we know it today, and to uh, how they're. Uh, their unwavering commitment to the delivery of the document puts us in a position where we can build a strong foundation of understanding in the application of traffic management on, 
on New Zealand roads. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to name individuals here, but, uh, but I do know a number of those people are in attendance today. The time is right for this review. Uh, it is appropriate for the, for the transport agency to request feedback relating to the application of the code from as many stakeholders as possible, which will inform on how the code of practice is able to assist in the management of their, their risks associated with their different work activities carried out in their own environment. It is my view, and it has been proven, that the, the, the New Zealand code of practice in terms of traffic management can hold its own against other similar documents internationally. And as such, this review is not required to update a document that has not served as well, but is to ensure we have confidence that it will continue to deliver fit for purpose guidance into the future. Therefore, the purpose of this review is to foster engagement with the users of the code of practice and to encourage feedback on all areas, whether, that, whether that's in ideas for new equipment, changes to the existing documentation forms that we use uh, on a daily basis, or perhaps a risk assessment tool that enhances and supports the decision on how to proceed for personnel on site. Please let us know your thoughts. In addition, there will be a gap analysis carried out on the Austro's Guide for Temporary Traffic Management. And to understand where inclusions may be made, thus aligning the New Zealand Code with the, with the Austro's Guide. As, as a member of Austro's and, and through our association with working groups um, in Australia in the TTM space, we have been being given the mandate to adopt any parts of their guide as we see fit for our purpose. Thanks, Fraser. <clears throat> uh, in relation to feedback, I am aware through my, my recent and not so recent discussions um, throughout the industry and with other industry bodies who use the code of practice, there is a desire to be heard. And at such time, and as such, that, that time is now ticking for you to send in your thoughts. The end date is 30th of June 2020 for the review team to receive your feedback. Please do not rush to submit. Consider and show how reasoning to all, sorry, consider and show sound reasoning to, to all suggested changes. We need to understand the value add to your proposal and how the Coptum and associated management of risk will be enhanced if that proposal is to be adopted. And finally, um, if anyone feels they did not get the opportunity to send feedback because they were un unaware of the review, and, and, and my experience tells me that that will happen, um, please remember that the Coptum Consult portal remains open for ongoing feedback and submissions, and which will be considered as the code of practice continues to develop into the future. So that's me. Thanks for your time, everybody. Okay. So, um, in terms of the distribution, I think uh, you know, is it Waka Kota? He ends it. has made. Uh, a pretty good effort to, to start the discussion uh, in terms of reaching out to people. This webinar signifies the uh, first part of that process. The reason um, CCNZ is involved is really we just wanted to spread the word to our members as much as we could through collaboration in this webinar. Um, Stacey is going to talk a little bit more around uh, engagement in a broader sense. So uh, I'll hand over to you now, Stacey. Yeah, thanks, Fraser. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, thanks everybody for um, for coming along this morning. Um, we all know how uh, how dear Coptum is to um to everybody's hearts. Um, I suppose just to um uh, expand a little bit on the um the uh, roadwork uh, site health and safety improvement plan that uh, Michael talked about. Um, this uh, the the Coptum 
the WorkSafe guidance and uh, also the uh, training and competency. You know, these are all work streams under that best practice. I suppose in, in addition, um, the Ministry of Transport late last year issued a um, another document and it's called the Road to uh, Zero um, Strategy. So that um, has uh, a lot of uh, work streams in it as well. And there's quite a few of them that have been uh, NZTA will be rolling with. So that other those other areas around public awareness and uh, compliance, um, that'll that's where well that document and the, probably the funding that comes from that will start to drive some of those other initiatives. So for uh, for CCNZ, you know the outcomes for us and I suppose a lot of our members and also non-members as well that are working out on the roads is that we um, create a, a safer environment. I suppose with the recent uh, traffic. Uh, tragic events which has happened in the TTM space in the recent years you know it's, that's what's uh, been required unfortunately to drive this process but you know the process is um, is up and running now um, there's a governance group that sits over this that uh, that uh, assists with uh, keeping it visible and keeping it moving along which is um, great I'd like just to talk around some of the critical risk assessment criteria that uh, was um, implemented by NZTA so after the uh, Matatar fatalities there was a, um, several uh, notices that did come out. And as a response to that, uh, CCNZ members uh, developed, uh, that were primarily working in the NOC space, um, did uh, put together, and it, it kind of uh, took some time to get to a, an end point, and it's, I suppose even at this stage now, it's not at an end point, uh, just around that critical risk assessment criteria. Um, it was for level one roads, over 65 kilometers an hour. But um, as that's been applied, we're finding that in other environments, it's, um, it's not working as well um, as, as hope. So there is a plan to, to review that. Um, I suppose as part of this process, if people want to provide feedback on that critical risk assessment criteria, um, or if you're not aware of it and you want to have a look at it, then um, you yeah, either contact NZTA or ourselves, and we're happy to, to go through that with you. But uh, yeah, making that more fit for purpose um, is part of, well, no, like be part of this uh, this process. Also, the, we're starting the uh, discussion with uh, WorkSafe and with NZTA around um, ownership of that criteria. Um, it probably fits better with um, within the landscape that uh, has been created by those two organisations. So that'll be a bit of an ongoing uh, discussion um, over as this whole landscape kind of uh, develops over time. So uh, just with CCNZ um, and that, uh, what we uh, want to see as part of the feedback. Uh, so the overall feedback, and um, we want to sort of split it into three parts, uh, sort of around the form and function of Coptum, um, how does it means to apply controls in TTM. So we um, expect a, a robust uh, feedback on, on the application at all levels, uh, the focus on sort of more of that high level application. So where it fits, you know, Suzanne and Michael have given an idea of uh, the, the higher level landscape, but there's probably some high high level uh, application of Coptum that still needs to be um, to be di discussed and probably agreed upon. Also, just get to gain uh, the uh, the clarity around uh, how that document has been applied and um, what how it could be applied better. Second part is probably more the uh, the technical input. Um, so this is um, should be more structured around the review process and it probably will focus on sort of more the words and the diagrams. Uh, and that kind of uh, lower level sort of feedback. And sort of the third area that we want to look at, and I suppose suppliers will be um, trying to, will be working through this space. And I suppose uh, Neil, um, as, and with some of his recent work has um, added a bit more clarity around the process. And it's around that uh, new methods of work and innovation. Uh, the Australian TTM guidance will, will may uh, provide uh, some further uh, changes to work practices. But there's, um, I think we need to have an element of blue sky thinking or just uh, stealing good practice wherever it uh, exists. You know, I think we're all, it can be uh, all, all happy to do that. So therefore, uh, we encourage groups to, uh, to collaborate uh, on comprehensive feedback. You know, talk with several uh, different interest groups um, and trying to get uh, sort of a collaborative uh, feedback rather than individuals. Um, probably more well considered than as uh, people have discussed through the issues. Um, prior to providing feedback. Um, but uh, also we just want to reinforce the messages here from uh, NZTA and uh, WorkSafe that you know, this is uh, a valuable process. It's probably been a while since this process has been uh, pushed out to, to all stakeholders. So you know, we just hope that uh, everybody gets in, engaged and hope we get uh, good feedback by the 30th of June. Thank you.
Okay, so that brings us to the Q&A segment of this webinar. We're getting a few coming through now, so thanks to those of you who have asked questions. Um, you're welcome to just use the chat function on the right-hand side. We can see your questions as they come through. Um, so I guess the first uh, couple of questions, one was around the timeframes. So uh, the in, in the June timeframe, Neil, someone said that um, you know, meaningful review of Copton is a big, ta big, big task. Uh, they asked if that time frame could be could be extended already. So, um, uh, any any read on that? I mean, uh, that's really when feedback is due. That's when the review is finalised. Yes. I think. Um, I mean that the, the idea is. I mean, we, we may we may consider, and we may have to um, to extend that date, but the review. This, this is not a short-term exercise. Uh, I, I am, or, or, or the discussions that we've had internally is this is probably going to be a 12 to 18 month project. Uh, so even though we, we are asking for, we, 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 we have to put a date. So we are encouraging people to help us in that process to get their feedback in as soon as possible, which is why we'd like it by the end of, of June. Because then it enables us to actually focus where we need to focus on suggested change to bring this to fruition at the earliest point that we can. Um, mm. So if, we, if we're receiving, if we're still receiving submissions in December, all it will do is just push the whole process out, which we don't want. Mm. Mm. Great. Uh, okay, so there's uh, there are a couple of questions about the Ostrods document. So uh, some people are asking if uh, we're the odd one out for not using it. Um, I guess is the idea that uh, Copton is, is, is aligned to the Ostrods document without being uh, uh, overridden by it because it needs to be specific for New Zealand. Is, is that, uh, there was um, yeah, there has been um, there's been lots of changes to discussion about whether they. The New Zealand Code of Practices um, will will um, be become a part of the Australia's Guide or, or vice versa. Uh, the Australia's Guide was was uh, when it was being developed was based on on the New Zealand Code of Practice, which um, which again shows that the recognition internationally of that we have a good document. Um, and there there are. I mean, specifications, um, legislation. Uh, I mean, the, just to want to give an example, we won't, We would never adopt the Australian signs in New Zealand, and the Australians are not going to adopt our signs. So that's one part of, of their document, which is which we we will not be using. So so what this is why we need to do this sort of analysis of their document to see where where possibly we may be able to. Um, integrate parts of, of what they are um, are suggesting uh, in their document. Mm. Um, we, but, but I cannot. Well, we cannot. We cannot adopt their whole document as our code or as our guide because mm. we it just we just would, would uh, we're not able to do that. Okay. Uh, so another question about. Um, Copton and directly, uh, someone asked, would the document consider the safety road and roadworthiness of TTM equipment that road workers use? Um, of course. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, Suzanne, we had one for you, which was around uh, the feedback channels for the work WorkSafe guidance document. Um, how will that be managed? Okay, so as I said before, we're currently looking at what process we'll undertake for mm. wider consultation. I don't have any confirmed answers on that, and I possibly won't until after we've had our next workshop with the um, group that we're working with that are representing the industry groups. So we'll get through that part, and then we'll put some information out through civil contractors to let people know how they can have their say and what process we're going to take. Thank you. Okay. and. Um couple more questions there. So, uh, one was around the legal status. Uh, is Coptum an approved code of practice? Someone, someone asked about the legal status of Coptum. Um, can someone cover that off? Code of practice is a best practice guideline. Thank you. Yes, there are. There are um, the 
code of practice is basically uh, reflects expectation of legislation, and it gives guidance on on the use of of um, uh, of practices, if you like, to meet the requirements of legislation. So if we take take advice from the code of practice, it helps us to comply. In other words, uh, but as a as a, a a legal document, it is not a legal document. It's a, it's a best practice guideline. But there's a bit, but it's the expect. But of course, it's the minimum expectation for um, for temporary traffic management on, on New Zealand roads. So it sets an expectation in, in that way. Um, but it's not actually a what you might call a legal document. Okay. Thanks for that, yep. Neil. Um, that's yep. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, just around um, going down the league, uh, the approved code practice, or going through uh, legislation. So if we, if uh, if it was to go to, to go down that path, the approved code of practice needs to be signed off by the minister. So that um, has a whole lot of complexity in, in doing that process, and then also um, updating a document um, that at times can, we know can be um, be fluid. So hence, uh, it's it is it sits where it sits. But a lot of the uh, contractual requirements point uh, to Cockton as um, as the minimum uh, controls that people need to input for TTM. Thank you. Uh, so there are some questions about the review itself. So I suppose um, this might be uh, once feedback has come in. Um, someone asked, uh, how will, and this is a question from Ben, how, how will people be selected to be on the review? Panel, uh, will there be representation of uh, industries that use Cockton, such as events and uh, utilities? So it's a question about board representation, and I guess whether um, it is a review panel or how, how the review of the feedback and the review of the code of uh, practice for temporary traffic management would be uh, managed. Sorry, I, 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 I didn't catch all of that, but I think it was asking, was it asking about what the review panel. Will, who will be on the review yeah, panel? Yeah. yeah well, how, how will it be selected and um, around the representation of uh, on that panel? Yeah, well, that that is um, that's a work in progress in the background, and as soon as we have that process decided, it will be communicated to all. Right. Uh, so we have a question about uh, training and competency. Um, Question around uh, consider what what consideration what level of consideration would be given to expense uh, around training? Uh, not an easy question to answer. No. You, you, you'd need to send in your submission so that we can review. Mm. That's right. And we've got a few very detailed questions around um, crash data and statistics and, and, and fatalities along those lines, which I think um, you know might be best addressed in follow up FAQ documents, um, unless. Yeah, so another question, the review process, oh, yeah. so it's um, costs of, um, you know, implementing any changes, to, it costs the industry of, of, of implementing any changes and um, and how that's balanced. So I guess it's a similar, along a similar vein around the training costs question. Um, cost of implementation, how is that considered? Uh Again, that, that I mean that that's not something that I can actually directly mm. answer here. So again, that would that would have to be part of you know make a yeah. submission to the review team, and that will be given to the appropriate area to discuss and to, to give feedback on. Great. Okay. So um, in terms of uh, the slides, we did kind of skim over the uh, slide which actually featured the details on the review information. So I'll just skip back to that now. So the resources, uh, the review documents are online there. So we're encouraging people to make a submission to uh, the review documents there. Uh, there's a link in the chat function at the top there. We've stuck a link up there for you so that you can link through to those documents directly. Uh, we'll also send that out to attendees following the webinar with the recording. Is um, yeah, sorry, we understand that a few of you might have uh, dropped in and out at some stage of this webinar. So uh, we've also, as part of this process, been uh, taking a bit of a registration of interest in what people are interested in uh, around the code of practice. So um, so that we, people can kind of give more detailed feedback and we can call on industry expertise. So do, would you be able to explain that a little bit, Stacey? 
Uh, yeah, so as part of the uh, registration process or a supplementary to the registration process, um, because we couldn't incorporate a research process, uh, was just uh, looking at uh, different areas uh, within Copland and trying to get uh, those people that are, do have interest to let us know or when uh, we do have uh, groups or we want to have discussion with certain individuals, uh, we will know who they are and we can contact them directly. So that link was um, beneath uh, the registration link. So yeah, if uh, yeah, if you do have a specific uh, interest and you and you want to be contacted directly, uh, please uh, fill out that uh, form and um, we'll have that uh, detail. Thanks. Thanks, Stacey. I'll just um, also drop that into the chat function while we're while we're talking on it. Okay, um, so we've got a few questions coming through around um, balance of utility group as a review group and uh, and training as well. So I think um, you know those are probably best addressed in follow up FAQ, but definitely put them in the chat function because we'll um, send any um, any of these questions through to Waikato Day following the webinar. Um, one was around, uh, so I've got a question here around the process for, uh, I think I think um, it's a bit too early to really be talking about the process for um, looking at unapproved devices, is it, um, Neil? Again, that would be handled as part of the part of the review. You can't really make well, there is, a, would that be there is an existing process, uh, which has been in place for, for many years, uh, which any, any device, any any traffic control device which 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 uh, anybody wants to introduce onto the onto the network um, has to meet the traffic control devices manual expectations so that has to go through the tcd steering group so once it's gone through that process and it's been agreed it can be used then if necessary there might be testing required um, to to um to give confidence in the, the functionality of the of the piece of equipment, and once all that's happened, and and by the way, that can take that can take up to two years, which I know a lot of people don't like to hear, but that's part of the testing process uh, of gather, gathering appropriate evidence. Um, once all that's done, then with, once we've agreed it's an actual piece of equipment that can be used on the network. Then we can. Then you can make a request for it to be added into the suite of recognised equipment which we use, and we refer to through the code of practice. That's the system. Thanks, and all Thanks Neil. I think that's a pretty, pretty good uh, detailed answer there. Thanks for that. Uh, we've also had a comment um, in response to the training queries. Um, it's also there's a dedicated email address for that, which is coptim.quals at nzta.govt.nz. So I think, you know, we could use that, but um, there's also the Copton Consult email uh, address right there, which is around the review process more specifically. So um, the subscriber list that I was talking oh, about. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Fraser, can I just interrupt yes. there? Sorry. Of course. I, I missed part of that comment about the Copton Quals email address, but what was it you said, you said there? Uh, so uh, someone has commented that uh, people should send training questions to coptim.quals at nzta.govt.nz. So that would be about current training as opposed to the reviews process. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, please. Yeah. And, and, and can I just add something to this? We, we, we have dedicated emails, which we get a lot of emails sent to the wrong email addresses. So this is probably, a, you know, it's probably a good, a good thing to say is, you know, if, if you're not sure on what email address you should be using then please talk to your maybe to your trainer that you use or somebody who has regular contact and has a contact within the agency to understand which email to use because we we end up having to troll other email addresses to try and find information which have been we've been told has been sent through so in this case for this review that's just yeah. You know, the email address is on the slide right now. Please make sure you use that email address. Thank, thanks, okay. Fraser. Thanks, Neil. That's uh, that's really good. Okay, so uh, questions keep them rolling through, but uh, I think got some questions around the cost implications. 
another question around how the code of practice review and the WorkSafe document will complement each other and not cause confusion. I guess uh, maybe maybe start with you, Suzanne, on that one. Yeah, no problem. So the WorkSafe document is going to make really clear the difference in roles between the two documents and the WorkSafe document will refer people to Coptim when it is relevant to do so. Um, I know there's questions around which takes precedence. I think you'll find that will be really clear when you read the document. Um, so I won't touch too much on that at the moment. I What I want to encourage people to do is just sit back and wait and let us get this document written and we will let you know how it's all going to unfold. Um, I know there's some questions in there around what are we releasing out right now. We're not releasing anything right now. We're in the writing and the research phase. Um, and while we're doing that, we're not going to be putting anything out in the public realm. We're just going to remain working with our industry group and testing some different things so that when we have a draft that comes out, it should be in a really good position. It should make sense. It should be simple to understand and actually kind of really explain what things mean. So that's really important to us to just give us that time to write this um, rather than push us to release things too early um, when they won't make as much sense. So, yeah. Mm, right, so in short, you're keeping, you're keeping a pretty close eye on the Coptum process. Mm. And, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm working in with Neil Greaves as well. So, you know, there's good connection between the Coptum mm. review and this WorkSafe document. So I don't think anyone has should have any concerns around how these two are going to work. It will come clear. Okay. Uh, so there's a question here around the review process, which is great. Um, so it's around how, how, how um, heavily evidence-based uh, the feedback has to be. I mean, yeah, we're, looking, we're looking for informal comments as well as um, evidence-based. But I mean, Neil, you did say that you had a preference that um, that uh, comments were, were backed up. Um, and what do you think about that? Well, I, I, just, I would just repeat what I said. Hmm. Uh, you know, we need we need to see evidence of uh, if so if if there's if there's evidence that is available um, to support any submission, then please um, provide that evidence. There may hmm. there may be situations where this is where this is innovation, and there may not be evidence to support. Uh, if it is innovation. As I've just suggested, uh, in relation to the TCD rule, just be aware that any new innovation has to go through a process. So it, might, it may be a good idea, but it has to be tested so that we can then justify through our own evidence that um, the the uh, proposal is fit for purpose. So just so please be you know be, be aware that that. The, the best if you can supply evidence please do but be aware that if you cannot if you're not supplying evidence it's highly likely it would need to be tested before it can be approved okay thank you uh, another question directly about the uh review process uh someone has uh, jo joanne actually has suggested um an open portal and how uh, and asked about how uh existing submissions can be made visible I suppose um, you know it's a good idea in principle, but there might be a few privacy concerns about uh, you know people getting getting hassled for their for their perspective. I mean, what, what's what's the, what's the stance on that in terms of the review process? Again, that's another area which needs to be decided uh, decided upon. Um, hmm. I see James is trying to add something here, and he's, he's struggling with his um, with his microphone, unfortunately. Um, I mean, in, in my view, we, we actually, through the Cobton Consult um, area now, we do try to, uh, I mean, right now on, on, the, on the website, you can actually go and look at the submissions that have been made historically, because uh, we do try to keep that up to date as much as possible. But, uh, but having said that, we, that, that area hasn't been um, uh, addressed in, in, in the last wee while. Um, so, so yes, it, 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 I think it's a, it's a good point and, and, and something we'd, we'd probably need to investigate. Uh, but I would need to speak with James uh, and, and the rest of the team uh, in that, you know, before a decision is made in that space. Okay, thank you. So I think um, we, we had scheduled um, in about 45 minutes for this webinar and I think uh, we're, we're just about on that time. So please, everyone, feel free to uh, ask any further questions you've got in the chat function there. Uh, in terms of um, ongoing process, I think, um, you know, 
I'm sure Waka Kotahi will keep communicating with people about this review as they go. So if you're uh, interested in um, the ongoing review, uh, please please uh, use uh, get, get in touch with uh, Waka Kotahi however you can. I'll provide another link in the chat function now to uh, the basically sign up for ongoing updates. Um, you, can, you can also do that via the Copton Consult email address, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, please use the email address. And, and I can also say I know that a lot, lots of people have our phone numbers and our personal email addresses. Uh, can I please ask you, in the first instance, email Copton Council um, uh, to, to give us your thoughts and your feedback. Okay, thank you very much, Neil, James, and Michael from Waka Kotahi. Thank you, Suzanne from WorkSafe. Thank you, Stacey for, for, from CCNZ for attending. And thank you to everyone else who took the time to be part of this. Uh, thanks also for helping us, uh, writing through us with a few little technical issues at the start. Uh, any questions, as Neil says, send through to Copton Consult. Uh, if you're interested in um, being uh, a bit more part of the process, feel free to click through to that uh, subscriber form I put in the chat there and do use that chat to ask us any questions. We will pass those on to the team in terms of the informal questions there. Thank you from CCNZ and Waka Kutai NZPA and I uh, hope everyone has a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Cheers, guys.